Hey guys, this is Justin back with an engineer's perspective. And today I'm doing a sharpening of this knife right here. It's a cold steel air light. It's the, um, one of their newer models. I think it came out last year in 2020 or maybe even 2019 already. So maybe it's not that new, but it's an AUS 10 as you may be able to see on there on the blade. Um, it weighs just a fuzz over three ounces. It's got a three and like a half inch blade on it. It's super thin. I'm actually really enjoying this blade. Super thick behind the edge. It's like 24 to 27 thousandths at 18, 19 degrees per side. Super thick, a little bit grody in that manner, but you know, it's actually performing pretty well for me. The triad lock on it has been, is pretty drop shutty and the opening action isn't as stiff as I thought it was gonna be. When I got this, I did a bunch of rounding of the spine and around the, the lock back on that triad lock. I also loosened up the clip some so you can kind of hear how it's ticking. You actually can't see light underneath it, but it's just barely not touching. So, you know, point of comparison, that's a clip that is touching, doesn't make any sound, but that's, that's where I've got the clip adjusted to, you know, I just bent it out and then pushed it back in, kind of get it roughly where I like it. So it's been nice. It's light in the pocket. It's a lot of knife. It's been pretty sturdy. It's very sturdy for how lightweight it is, but I, I really like this, this package here, even though it's a lot thicker than what I normally prefer. I've sharpened this AUS-10 twice now. I'm just going to get into it. I've sharpened the AUS-10 on this thing twice now. Yeah. The first time um, uh, was with the Triple B Super Vitrified 400 Grit Diamond Stone to get rid of that factory bevel and fix some of the weird, weird factory-ness about it. Um, and then after the 400, I went to the 800 grit Chosera just to kind of feel the hardness of the steel and the carbide volume. And then the 3K Chosera, the edge that came up on it was fine. Um, that was about 18 to 19 degrees per side, which was lower than what was probably 20 degrees from the factory. Um, Uh, that edge rolled uh, quite a bit near the tip in what it was not very hardcore use at all, I would say. But I don't like to judge a steel off a factory, um, a factory sharpening. So I like to get a few sharpenings in before I really pass judgment on it. So that was the first sharpening. Second sharpening I did on the Worksharp Ken Onion. And that one I did uh, 18 degrees per side setting. And I wanted to kind of even out the bevel because freehand I had done 18 degrees per side in this flat area. But I saw from the factory they went lower, you know, more, I'm sorry, more obtuse in the front to keep it from getting thick. So I had kind of manually did that sharpening by hand, but I wanted to thin that out a little bit on the work sharp, so I did that. Um, so looking forward to the fact that I knew I wanted to sharpen it on the KME, um, and I wanted to do less work on the KME. So I let that work sharp Ken Onion kind of do that work for me. So right now I'm sharpening at 18 degrees per side, and I'm just trying to basically flatten out the the convex edge that was on the, the work sharp. Um, it doesn't need to be sharpened. I cut about 40, 50 feet of cardboard, mostly just to kind of test out the ergos and the um, geometry of the blade. You know, geometry is not great, but I don't know. It's, it's fine. It's whatever. It's nothing that excites me, but I mean, does it work like it does? All right. So, yeah, 140 grit KME uh, Goldstone. 
on that side, raise the burr, switch into the other side. The thumb stud is kind of asymmetric on these cold steels. Not quite hitting it, so that's nice. I don't have to screw around with that. Got Sharpie on the edge, so I'm just kind of working that heel a little bit because it's not quite perfect. This is going to be a long video, no doubt, so I hope you feel like sitting and watching a KME sharpening if you're here. You know, I tried to pick the slightly more obtuse setting on the KME so that I wouldn't be doing too much of like a reprofile action for this video. But it looks like up here by the tip, there's a little bit of that shenanigans going on there. Um, like it was a little bit more obtuse and I didn't quite get it all the way out with the work sharp which I kind of knew when I was doing it. I was running out of time. But you know these this 140 grit diamond just digs right into that AUS 10. So that's good. Um what's going on with me? Uh, I keep I really want to get some uh, new kitchen knives something in half 40. I really wanted to get a shorter bladed uh, Sukunari in half 40. I think they're probably most well known for their heat treat on half 40. Um, I'm looking for something that's kind of like almost like a workhorse but in like a super smoking hot steel is kind of what I'm on the hunt for. There's the, the Gehis, Gehis, the Kohetsus, and the Sukunaris, really. Um, but because of Black Friday, all of the short Sukunaris are sold out. So I don't, there are none to buy. So now I'm trying to decide if I should just wait for the Sukunaris to come back in stock at places, or if I do, did find a Sukunari 170 millimeter Santoku and ZDP 189 for like, I think it was $295 or something, which is a dang good deal for one of those. Just not sure if I really feel like doing ZDP 189. Um, but see, so yeah, I'm kind of entertaining that. I also keep mulling over in my head if I want to try out a new sharpening system. Um, and Lord, do I have a lot of sharpening systems, but just sometimes the KME, I have, you know, having to clamp it up like this and the small stones. I just wonder if I had something like the uh, Hapstone or Edge Pro or TS Prof, if, if this process would go faster. And that'd be pretty appealing to me personally, but I don't know. It's just like, I've invested so much money into hand sharpening. It's just like, I don't wanna split up my resources so much on sharpening equipment. I'm doing a little bit of everything that everything is kind of mediocre. I'd rather have just a few things that are really great kind of a thing. I bumped up to the 300 grit diamond stone. I didn't deburr the 140 just because the 300 I feel like has enough cutting power. Although that said, the 140 grit to 300 grit jump is a super important one. In my opinion, um, the, the 140 grit just really, really mashes up that apex. Um, and I feel like you've really got to work out those scratches and that kind of like micro chipped apex with the 300 grit. So really make sure you spend your time on this 300 grit if you do that jump. I will note that my 300 grit stone is probably getting ready to be replaced here fairly soon. 
It's just, I've sharpened a lot of knives on, on this KME. We've done a lot of reprofiling and this thing is just seeing a lot of stuff. That came up quick, so I am gonna deburr a little on here. I mean, this, we're getting to the point where in the KME process, where now I'm gonna be pretty conscious of my burr size. And so I see here at the tip, when I do this big swipe, it's not getting the burr right here, right back here. And that's why that is a good indicator that you actually gotta work a little bit more before you move on here. So that's a great thing to notice. And that's a kind of an important spot in the blade that I don't wanna miss. Just gonna put it back in the stand. It just kind of keeps me in shot. I usually like to hold it in my hand while I sharpen. Try to just see a little bit better in the light. Oh, just doesn't look correct right in that little spot. And keep working it. It should go a lot faster if I had a fresher 300 grit stone instead of this tired old hog. Just gonna try to make sure I work it back into this, the other areas of the blade so I don't have a weird spot. Did I get it? Looks like I worked it out. Yeah, I could just see the light reflecting that burr. Just a little bit. And that's where I was thinking that if I'm not hitting the burr, that means I'm not fully apexed. And that's a red flag. Now I'm all paranoid. Like I said, that 300 or 140 to 300 grit jump is really important. So I'm just really making sure that I'm flipping that burr everywhere. So there might just be little spots where you're not quite getting it. I think we're pretty good here. I don't recommend these big swooping strokes if you're looking for an even finish, but and I'm trying to be expeditious here. All right, on to the 600. Still got tape residue from cutting up boxes on it, so it's not like I'm trying to keep it pretty or anything like that. It's got a nice size sharpening choil at the back here, and uh, it's done ground pretty well. Sometimes at the very back of the blades, back here, is uh, the grind won't come down all the way as it kind of like swoops up towards the plunge um, and it gets thick. But, and usually if I see that and it's, so like here, this might be an example. 
So here's an example here. Do you see how it swoops up there? And that's partly just because I've sharpened it so far back, but sometimes I'll just extend the sharpening choil out towards the tip to kind of alleviate that. But there's other factors I usually consider other than that appearance, if I'm gonna extend the sharpening choil or not. On this knife I would, because I actually like to have access to that pointy heel. Because, you know, a lot of people talk about the tippy tip because it's nice to be able to, to stab things. But every knife actually has a potential for two tips. You know, the one out here and the one back here. So on knives, like the 940 is one that I need to extend out. On knives where they've got that thing, that point you can use it for useful things and it's usually very sharp because you rarely use that part of the blade so yeah i plan on extending that out with a dremel one of these days because yeah it's nice having two pointy tips instead of just the one but yeah a knife like the mini griptilian is what comes to mind is like perfectly spaced there where it doesn't need any help at least the one that i had where you can really actually use that that heel for for tasks probably i have too big of a burr at the tip and about where i want it at the back here i think Remember when you're sharpening the tip to not, you know, tip over too far. You know, when you're thinking about sharpening the tip of a knife, look at the very tippy tip and imagine that little metal molecule way out there at the tippy tip. You're gonna wanna leave that last molecule on there. You wanna remove everything behind it, but leave the last tippy tip molecule. And that, that's the best way to visualize what you're doing and will kind of keep you from wanting to round that tip over. That's probably too big of a bird again. Just cutting off the burr, checking to see how that looks after doing that kind of a stroke. Kind of make sure I've done enough work on the 600. Because it should flip very easily on the 600. And if it doesn't, you gotta keep doing your work. So this, this is kind of an important process. Looks pretty good. Light pressure. This is where I like the KME because you can hold it like this and do lighter pressure than the weight of the stone very easily. So I really like being able to hold it kind of up. Yeah, much less weight than, than the stone. All right, let's just feel that on the fingernail. Really sharp. We're gonna keep going up to the 1500. You know, these lower, lower carbide volume, lower hardness steels can be kind of fun. Oops, lazy. <laughs> on a more polished edge. I definitely find what comes to mind is uh, LC200N and uh, S35VN. I, I like to sharpen both of those up to the Spyderco Ultrafine. It's a really nice, nice edge. Go up to the Ultrafine and then 
strop it out. I'm pretty tempted to do that here because I just know that I kind of like that on those steels. You know, S35VN has quite a bit more carbide volume than LC200N does, but I just, it comes up so fine and not that bitey that I just really prefer the, uh, the polished edge on S35. And as Michael Christie would say, you know, you know, you're going up to the high grits, but you're not necessarily looking for a polished finish. You'd say it's a coarse finish. And you know, he'd say that and he would have gone through, you know, a DMT coarse, fine, extra fine, extra, extra fine, Spyderco ultra fine, and then, you know, three, three, one, half and quarter and tenth micron. So it doesn't sound like a coarse finish, but so, you know, I'm not spending the time to make sure every scratch is removed um, and I'm not perfectly aligning my scratches either. I'm not looking for the polish on the bevel. So, you know, the apex is very fine, but the actual finish is, you know, not going to be super mere polishy. There's one spot back here that's worrying me with this 1500 wondering if I didn't if I missed that with the 600 if I wasn't paying attention right there right in that spot looks like we got it Cut off that burr, see how it looks. See on this side, similar, but more towards the heel. I need a tiny bit more work. flipping this pretty frequently so I guess I'll keep it up that looks pretty good burr is flipping both directions the whole burr still maybe a tiny bit of trouble back here at the heel it's really important to have good lighting for this type of work here because without this nice white light right above my head here um, it'd be a lot more difficult to see this and I'd really recommend a, um, a flashlight have a flashlight on hand to kind of help you if you don't have the the best lighting yeah just like a nice light source right above you really helps It's looking very good. So let's do this kind of light passes. Light passes. less than the weight of the stone and holder. Still being careful not to round off the tip. This is uh, the deburring process. So I flipped it back and forth lots of times there when I was kind of working it. And then now doing these into the edge strokes here. really 
make sure I've just got something clean coming into this. We'll see how clean the edge is real quick too before we move on. Let's just feel. Feels very clean. Let's get some bone book paper. Oh, saddle. Oh, can't be that. Can't be that great. I won't even do this whole thing. That's not impressive at all. Uh, I estimate the 1500 grit to be about like 10 micron or so. I'm sure if you if you crease it, then it looks impressive. But. It's definitely sharp. So, very sharp. Let's look at it under this light here. Let's feel it with a three finger test. Does not feel like it's got a burr. There's a level of aggression that a burr will add that a clean apex at this grit will not have. And I know it's weird to be looking for that reduction in aggression, but you will see it when you go from a burred edge to a clean edge. And that, that edge right there feels pretty clean. Pretty clean. Excuse me. As a matter of fact, this video is long. I'm going to do a best test right now. And then I'll do a best test after the rest of the progression. It'll be an extended progression here. Fuck, for goodness sake. Alrighty. So as best I can tell, a clean edge lead 1500 grit edge. He's got a best score at 18 degrees per side. One forty-five. You know, I think a big thing, angle plays a big part in these best scores. I think a big thing um, in some of the stuff that I've seen out there are people that are sharpening down to like 12 degree per side edges. I have not messed around with it much in terms of that, uh, but I think that's something to mention. Come on, where is the filament? 155. I would bet money that that is a dead clean edge right there. 155 bess. So. There you go. Can have a absolutely clean apex at that um, level there. So we're gonna do some stone uh, thickness compensation. I've got a shorter video about that. So this is the stone I just finished on, the 1500 gold series. I'm just gonna snug that up. You know, just kind of reasonable pressure. I don't want any wobble on this far side here near the, the angle tower. That's got to be not, you know, I'm not cramming it in there as hard as I can, but, you know, there's, there's no room for movement. Then with light pressure, the same kind of pressure I was pushing up, I'm now pushing down. No room for movement. We should be compensated. This Spyderco Ultrafine was uh, cut and lapped by the late Ken Schwartz, who just recently passed away. So that's very unfortunate. I remember, I, I really believe I started the trend of, of this because all of a sudden, I had asked if he would do this, and then a bunch of people 
kind of jumped on that train because he started putting out ads for it in a way, kind of gauging everybody's interest. But I kind of started this. So I think nowadays you can buy the the Ultra Fine, Spyderco Ultra Fine from like Gridomatic or just like anywhere. But back in the day, you could not. And uh, this this was a custom, a custom run that Ken did for several knife sharpeners in the sharpening enthusiast Facebook group. When I angle compensate, I do like to check with the Sharpie. Um, what I love about this ultra fine stone is it's low maintenance and wow, like it, the polishing power and speed of this baby is awesome. I just love it. The, the polish it can bring up and the speed with which it does it is pretty amazing. And yeah, we've removed all of the Sharpie, just really working it. All right, on to the other side. Yeah, removing that Sharpie. Well, it looks like I might have tipped the stone a little too far on the tip is what I'm seeing. So we're going to have a little bit of a fragile tip. This sharpening. But, you know, you can see we're 32 minutes in already. And I could probably stop, you know, here. I could have stopped a while ago. I Probably like the 600. Life would have been fine. So I don't know how long that would have taken. But this is why I don't really sharpen on the KME that much especially on a steel like this, where it's not really gonna hold this edge I've been working so hard for right now. It's not gonna hold it. So I just kind of ask myself, what's the point? What's the point of putting in all this effort? So then it's like, okay, well then do a KME sharpening on, you know, steels that make sense, like 10V or Maximet or Rex 45. And uh, yes, I do. I agree with that, but at the same time, just knocking down that burr, knocking it down. At the same time, uh, is those steels are much harder, so they take longer because of that, and it's just, and like Maximit and Rex 45, like those are steels that are fun to sharpen freehand, you know? It's like they actually come up nice and aren't temperamental with the burr and everything. So it's like, I don't want to sharpen those in the KME. So the KME doesn't get used a lot for me because it just takes a long time and the steels that I feel like would be worth doing it for um, are ones I like to freehand anyways. So it just doesn't get used much. Might be ideal for the, the mid-tier steels. You know, like even like M4, I think is a de is a good steel for this. M4 it may be like the ideal case, maybe Crewware, even somewhere something in that range. So theoretically, like Magna Cut and you know S30V, maybe not S30V, maybe the S45VN steels that are gonna hold that edge just a little bit longer. Shine always comes up so nice off of this stone. It's so much faster and easier to work with than like a strop or even like a polishing tape, I feel. So it's definitely my preference. Oh yeah. Yeah, we didn't hold back on that ultra fine there. You can see kind of Ken Schwartz thing on the back. Pretty sweet. Four micron uh, strop. This is the, the KME uh, from the KME website. It's like a yeah, kangaroo strop. You know, high quality. 
with a four micron Ken Schwartz CBN. And actually on these straps, when I angle compensate, because they're squishy, I like to put the squishy side down. You can clean off that table if you like. I don't because I'm a slob. Uh, feels pretty good. These are the ones that it's easy to mess up your angle compensation because they're squishy. Um, yeah, this is the Ken Schwartz CBN emulsions that they sell on the, the website. And I've got four micron. And this is part of why I believe that that 1500 grit is 10 micron. Part of it is the actual finish that I see off of it. And the other part is generally you do those kind of 2x jumps, you know. So going from a 10 micron to a 4 micron which is kind of their recommended practice. Kind of makes sense in my mind. I'm kind of doing it in two sections. Sometimes I'll do blades in three sections. Right now I'm doing it in two, just kind of front and back, just because it's easier. And I'm just gonna do a little bit of alternating work. Kind of doing medium pressure. One and two. Done with the four micron. Onto the half. I'm not gonna angle compensate that. Or sorry, one and a half micron. I'm gonna wipe this off. Feel sharpness. So yeah, we lost a lot of aggression, but it is super keen. And I'm not looking for an aggressive edge, I'm looking for polished. Yeah, very, well, we'll see how the bite turns out at the end of this. Four, five, one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. But I mean, yeah, let's see how long this is taken. Like, geez. One, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. Nothing fancy. Used to use the Edge Pro. I don't know what he uses now. But he kind of said it was the easiest and fastest thing for him to just jump into it and jump out of it. Um, and I feel like the whole clamping part of this equation was part of why he chose the Edge Pro. And that's kind of what my allure is to the Edge Pro or the Hapstone as well. But I don't know. I just feel like it's kind of one of those things where it's like, oh, the grass is greener on the other side. It's like if you really want to do it fast, just do it freehand. It would be nice to do it the speed of freehand with the guaranteed results of, of this process, you know. As you can tell, I'm not overly concerned with aligning my stropping direction to the kind of original scratch pattern. I'm just, whatever is easiest for me to get, I'm doing it. Because it's hard to start at the tip and come down because the tip can stab in. And it's hard to start from the heel for the same, well, the heel is easy. So, I mean, I guess I could do one, two, that helps. Anybody who's getting weirded out out there. I'm just gonna do light, 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 light. Let's feel. And there's some bite, but not a lot. And it feels super keen. So 
now it'll split it without it being uh, you know creased like it had to be before one and a two that's it that's the full progression right there I like to take that out let's do a kind of final check here on it yeah, it's pretty shiny you know, it's not a perfect finish but it is shiny you can see I didn't get all the way up to the shoulder, which I knew I wouldn't. You can see how shiny it is, reflecting the cami gold. So, very shiny, very sharp. Let's see what the best tester says. question is with all that stropping are we just developing new burr or are we actually refining the edge down that I don't know 18 degrees per side down to quarter micron CBN oh, come on 145 no improvement <laughs> from the 1500 grit in best score up to this. I can't believe that. What am I doing wrong, guys? If anybody's watched 40 freaking minutes of this, let me know. 135. So an average of 140 versus 150. So we dropped 10 bests with, you know, 15, 20 minutes worth of work. It's definitely sharp. This edge will have a lot more longevity, I think, than that work sharp edge. It's just higher quality overall and all the diamond abrasives uh, and uh, or super abrasives because I'm going to include CBN in that. Um, I'll post a picture of the, the edge if you're interested in that. But I just I really wanted to get this on the KME just because I, I kind of miss the KME at sometimes. I just forget how long it takes. But uh, yeah, that's all I've got. Um, there's that. That knife out. Really, really been enjoying this knife. You know, there's a lot of things not to love, but there's a lot of things to love. It's a good knife. So, yeah, there she is, nice and thick. But that's the full, full on sharpening there. That's all I've got for you. Have a good one. Bye.